Hi, um, my name is um, Alexandra, and I am a production manager at Artfinder, which is a UK-based company. Do not let the accent fool you. Um, now, Artfinder was actually started by a group of people that have um, very different backgrounds. They have two things in common. One, we're all extremely passionate about art. And two, we've identified that art is actually not very well served by the web. There's really no one focus point um, online that you can experience art in. And if you think about other sectors like music and fashion and movies, um, all of them sort of have an online destination. So what we are trying to do at Art Finder is really creating this home for art online um, where you can find and discover um, more art, where um, you can get more information and actually retain that information, and um, where you can start sort of creating your own art profile and share it with um, your friends and, and other people. Now, in order to do this, uh, we really have four basic components that we build. Uh, the first one is um, goes into content and cataloging, um, and we have started creating a database that has over 12,000 um, artists, over half a million works of art, and we're still growing and working with our partners to really try to accumulate um, enough information that is both relevant and accessible. And this is about individual works of art, about artists, but also where you can experience this art live. Um, so really work with our partners, try to drive that kind of traffic back to them as well. Um, the other thing we really want to do is build a community. And in, in order to enable that, um, we give people tools to collect art, um, share it, really sort of start making art a part of your own identity. And also um, enabling you to recommend the kind of things that you like to your friends and learn from them what kind of things they like. Now we've also identified that art is a particularly hard thing to search for because the traditional keyword search doesn't really work with art, it's a visual thing. So, you know, recommendations help with that, but we're also using technology to try to identify how you can use image-based um, search um, to look for the things that you like um, and, and also to be able to find new things. That includes image recognition and other discovery tools that we have online. Uh, whoops. And, and all of that really is you know, we're, we're sort of building these tools to help you find the kind of art that you like. And um, once you have that information, to also try to help you to experience this live. Um, and it's, you know, about looking at the stuff on, on web, but really tying it back to our partners and, um, and helping people understand where they can actually find the kind of art that they're looking for. Um, now, the last part is about how you consume art. And that's, you know, there's the traditional ways, of course, um, but we're also exploring new ways of tying you back to our partners, of um, enabling you know, things, you know, all, all these things online, um, but also exploring new technologies. And one of the things we're really excited about is actually tablets. Reason for it is that they're quintessentially a visual tool. And they're accessible worldwide, or I should say the content will be accessible worldwide, and they're mobile, they're easy to carry around. Um, and we really think that there's potential for, for tablets to open up an entire new world of how people consume art, how the information comes to you, um, and, and actually how you can enhance your live experience. So in order to really explore this potential to its maximum, we decided to develop a apps production system, which we call Fountain. And it's a web-based <laughs> system, um, and it's, it's online, but it's um, secured by password. Um, and you get you know, your username and everything. And it takes you through a step-by-step, -step, quick, easy, and cost-effective um, way of developing apps. Um, it's it's text-based for the kind of content you want to inform about your collection. Um, and, and then it also creates a gallery space where you basically just upload images and upload spreadsheets with the kind of data that our partners already have. Um, now, this is a template system, but we also understand that partners have a brand and a visual image that um, it's unique to them. In order to facilitate them to be able, you know, to, to help them be able to expose that, we've created a home page, if, if you like, or cover page for our apps, which are all image-based. So this is where we're really recognizing, you know, people need to be able to identify themselves uh, through these apps that they're creating with our system. What you get is an app that 
has at its heart images. Um, and all the kind of information I have in it, including text documents, which are generally already um, developed for exhibition collections, et cetera. Um, visitor information that includes maps, links back to our partners. Again, this whole idea that we're working together and really want to enhance the experience of live art. Um, and also images that have basic metadata. Um, but also, we have enabled all these aspects of sharing and community um, through Facebook and emailing. Uh, and really, you know, the point here is that our tablets um, or our tablet apps are an integrated part of this entire system that includes websites and our relationships with our partners. And what we're really trying to do is build a community that can have um, art at its heart. Um, I am going to now pass you to the able hands of Priscilla, and she'll talk to you a little bit about how grants have helped and enabled our work. Thanks, Alex. So I think a lot of us, or a lot of everyone here, is trying to navigate the grants process and understand how, how a project like this can go through it. So this section, I'm going to try to give some information on it. So we applied for a grant about six to eight months ago, and this is what we produced, what Alex just kind of went through very quickly. So let's go through it again. There was a website with about half a million um, pieces of art and about two and a half thousand galleries online, as well as 12,000 artists. We did some customized data cleaning tools um, that helped us with content. And I'm pretty passionate about content because I head up content at ArtFinder, as well as recommendations, um, a recommendations engine we produced as part of that website, image recognition technology, and the iPad and smartphone apps that we talked about. So there was a lot of deliverables, I gotta tell you. I was a bit uh, at first worried about the project scope, but that is what we did and applied for for a particular grant. But why did we do this? This is kind of our key objectives. We wanted to establish some synergy, synergies with our, with our collaborative partners where we can increase public access, similar to Nesta's kind of um, objective of engagement, audience engagement, as well as widening um, the public access for the entire sector. So you can see we want to increase public access, drive a lot of traffic and footfall back to the museums and galleries, our partners. And we wanted to also um, allow access to, to images no one else gets to see or artworks that are in the digital stacks. So that's one of the objectives, as well as exploring new ways that we can, again, establish business models. We talked a little bit about print on demand, the apps, um, new channels, basically, across platform. So when we talk about digital technologies, we're talking the web as well as applications. And um, again, going back to those out-of-print catalogs. Who did we collaborate with? Well, we had a partner called Paul Holberton Publishing. Now, he runs a publishing company that helps actually produce these catalogs in book form. So he knew about the, cur the, the, the publishing background that we needed. He had the art history background. He knew content. And that is definitely key, because we want to represent the works and the content the best way possible for the museums, galleries, or picture libraries. Intro Analytics was an, a technology partner we had, which helped with our recommendations engine. And that's all the algorithms behind what makes our magic tour magical, and allow, allows you to kind of give you a customized tour of what works you would like, or your friends would like. And then, not, um, last but not certainly not least, is the many museums and galleries that we partnered with. And again, very, very tight timelines, but we went out there and we, we talked to um, a lot of these galleries and got their content on board. And we're still in discussions with um, many more, as you can see here. Challenges. Um, I definitely think there are the devils are, are definitely in the details, but not to get bogged down by them. So for us, content, uh, manage, managing the standards and the guidelines was tricky, because every museum or arts, arts and cultural organization has different ways of dealing with our content, and it's very key that we best represent that um, without, um, again, making things inefficient. So we drive efficiency, but keeping in mind that we need to make sure we respect how that content needs to appear. So mm -hmm. being flexible. Delivering on the wide scope that I listed off um, meant making sure we had dedicated technical resources. So we made it very clear who's on the project, who's on the team, what are their roles and responsibilities, who's the dedicated project management resource to help coordinate all of that. We had something called sprints, which told us exactly what we're delivering every two weeks, which is good, kept us on track and on time, and user testing and feedback. So if things don't work, we have to adapt pretty quickly, and that's part of that audience engagement um, aspect. 
Finally, managing the costs required to digitize content. I mean, something that we definitely don't want to take for granted and making sure that we make the right technology choices um, so we're not always fixed on what we think we're going to do. Sometimes we have to see what the problem is before we can adjust. So that was fairly important. And the learning and impact. Um, again, I talked about content structuring it, make sure we have guidelines that are flexible. The partnerships have to be strong. We were lucky enough to partner with people we knew fairly well. We knew how they worked. We met very frequently, and um, I was one of the project managers for this grant process, so I can say communication was um, pivotal, because we had so many stakeholders, and we had to make sure that we, we adhere to their needs, as well as what are they getting out of the project? What are their exploitation benefits? So that was very important. Um, I've tried to go th through that very quickly. Um, I would say that please definitely approach us if you are looking for partnering and you like some of the technologies we offer, as well as we have some iPad apps that we can dazzle you with the, the actual product um, here. So I hope that was helpful.